Can a problematic student change for the better? It's impossible. Old habits never die. Nobody can change. But no matter how small, it only takes a single step for someone to transform themselves, to become better people than they were yesterday. Hi, my name is August, and welcome to a Classroom the Elite analysis video of the second volume slash arc in the series. Let's talk about these two problematic individuals and their beginning steps to their transformation. The most problematic student in Class D might have barely passed his exams, but that doesn't mean his problems are over. After Sudo gets into a fight with students from another class, Class D as a whole is being held accountable, and any points they've desperately earned is put on hold. Needless to say, people are bitter. Sudo claims that he did it out of self-defense, but with the evidence showing injuries on three students, that claim doesn't appear likely. The Class C students claim that Sudo brought them to the old building to beat them up. Meanwhile, Sudo argues that he was actually called on by them, and he fought back when they got aggressive with him. Both sides are accusing the other of starting the fight. However, Sudo is at a clear disadvantage. Sudo's infamous reputation for being a reckless, hot-headed individual is reason enough for people to infer that it's his fault. With no solid evidence to back them up, his own classmates aren't willing to jump at the chance to help him. Even Horikita, someone who fought to keep him in the school in the midterms, didn't initially help. His previous actions, rebelling and outbursting, is very much like him. People know Sudo's typical behavior, and the Class C students use this as a defense statement. Bad behavior implies more unpleasant conduct. It's a clear weakness of Sudo's. He might not care what other people think of him, but this trial is way more important to him than what he initially thinks. If he loses his trial in any way, his standing on the basketball team will be affected. He's been offered a position on the regular team as a first year student, a privilege and an honor. Losing that would be crushing, especially since he's so dedicated towards the sport. Punishing him won't help him change. It might even backfire and cause him to engage in more reckless behavior. In this case, negative reinforcement is not a good idea. No matter which way the verdict goes, Sudo's reputation is still terrible. Even if he's a very skilled basketball player, that doesn't matter if he continuously engages in reckless behavior, putting his team at risk. He he has the potential and drive to succeed, but his current attitude is stopping that growth. This goes beyond just his basketball team, but also his class. His own individual self-worth affects the whole group. And that's why his formal acknowledgement of his flaws is so important. He's genuinely thankful to Aya Nakoji and Horikita for saving him again in the trial, but the action of his own self-admission is what's important. By identifying himself that he needs to change, he's taken one step forward. A small one, but a necessary one. Sudo isn't the only one that has their own share of problems. Some may be unable to voice them, scared of publicly standing out. But it's only thanks to this new character who was able to overcome their fear that Aya Nakoji and Horikita are able to defend Suo. Meet Sakura Airi, a rather reserved and shy individual. As shown by her demeanor, she has poor communication skills and lacks confidence in herself. She doesn't know how to interact with other people, she doesn't like being the center of attention, and she gets nervous in front of others. Now, while there are people in Class D that have communication problems, Sudo's quick temper and anger, Horikita this prideful arrogance, Yamaguchi and Ike's outlandish remarks, but the lack of communication itself is an issue too. Sakura Airi was in the area and witnessed the fight between Suo and the Class C students. However, when it was publicly asked if someone was there to help vouch for Suo, she never raised her hand. Even when talking in front of Kushida and Hirata, the two most sociable people in the class, she runs away from them, appearing uncomfortable. She is simply shy, and yet she really wants to connect with somebody. It's just that the conscious feelings of her insecurities are holding her back. After Aya Koji, Kushida, and Sakura trip to the repair store, Sakura expresses her true desire to help Sudo. I think that if I kept quiet, I'd probably come to regret it. I don't want to cause trouble for my classmates, but if I spoke up as a witness, then... I would definitely stand out. There are going to be moments when she can't avoid these social interactions. If she's not able to communicate with benevolent people like Hushida and Hirata, I fear for what will happen to Sakura when she's out in the real world. The store clerk asking Sakura for her personal information was full of malicious intent. If she cannot stand up for herself, how will she ever serve a valuable role in Class D? It not only hurts her growth individually, but also to the class, and by extension, society as a whole. Now, we can understand what she's going through. Everyone struggles with some insecurity or fear at some point in their life. Sakura isn't the only one. Honami Ichinose, arguably the most well-known and sociable student in their year, sidesteps a conflict to avoid hurting a classmate's feelings. Here, Ichinose tries to use Aya Nakoji as a fake boyfriend to decline the love confession, but Aya Nakoji convinces Ichinose to face it head on. This particular moment is a small glimpse of Ichinose's true weakness, as we'll find out later in the series. What ultimately matters is what we can do about our problems and the steps we take to overcome them. When Aya Nakoji befriends Sakura and convinces her to testify for her 
herself does she start gaining courage, the bravery to stand up for herself. She goes as far as to display her secretive gravier photos as evidence to help defend Suo and even confronts her stalker. Of course, she's not perfect. It took a lot out of her to overcome her fears and she leaves herself vulnerable. Luckily for her, thanks to Aya Nakoji having Sakura on his friends list on his phone, he and Ichinose were able to save Sakura in time and report the stalker to the authorities. Obviously, we don't expect massive changes overnight, but until she can finally stand on her own, her friends are there to help her out. Who knows, maybe she'll even find a friend group along the way to depend on. What we lack now is individuals can be compensated through others. That's how important relationships are. This school is designed to educate students and mold them into respectable members of society. By being an isolated school separated by old friends and family, this environment expects these budding students to adapt to their environments. Those who do will succeed, and those who don't will fail. And this school gives equal opportunity for people to do so, even Class D. After all, they wouldn't be here if the school didn't see potential in them in the first place. Class D is at the bottom of the barrel in class hierarchy, but they can still reach self-actualization. For some, it will take some time. For others, they're gonna have to learn that they will have to change their old ways. Sakura and Sudo's actions are proof of this, and it's not just them. Everyone in Class D is defective in some sort of way. Even Aya Nakoji, someone as deceptively intelligent and cunning as him, has flaws. Quoted by Chabashira, Aya Nakoji may be the most flawed individual out of all of them. From transforming old habits to growing relationships to realizing one's own self-worth, change is necessary to improve yourself as an individual. Sakura took that initial step to change herself. She should be proud of that. A small victory is still a victory regardless and the more people realize this, the stronger they will become together to eventually overtake Class A.